Howdy, 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 my name is Anasha Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read the SB Foundation Wiki. In the last episode, we read an interesting topic, the Blue Ridge Phenomenon, Dr. Wondertainment's Young Surgeon's Transplant Kit, Nose Crab, and Neural Polypore. In this one, we're going to be reading Grow Your Own Child Kit, A Signal, A Swamp God, The Painkiller, and Videos of a Robbery. I don't know how we're going to read videos, but we video reading, so let's start that. Ugh. My headphones keep making weird clickety-clack noises in my ears, but I don't think you guys can hear it, so that's good. So, 1106 is safe, and it is to be kept in a secure containment locker in site blank. All testing must be approved by level 3 staff or higher. All uncontained instances of 1106 discovered must immediately be secured and brought into containment. So I guess it can't be that bad if it's safe. 1106 is a cylindrical metal chamber composed of an unknown alloy determined to be roughly 96% iron. During its standby phase, 1106 is inactive and will cover, oh, excuse me, its top cover will be open, granting access to the interior. However, the inside is consistently found to be empty during the standby period. If at any point a human tissue sample is placed inside the chamber, such as a buccal scraping or a sample of blood, saliva, or redacted, 1106 will close and enter its locked phase. All attempts to open or otherwise access the interior of 1106 during its locked phase have proven unsuccessful. Attempts to place cameras or other devices inside 1106 to observe the inside during the locked phase have also failed. It appears that the item will not close and lock if there is any inorganic material inside the chamber. Three months after the initiation of the locked phase, the chamber will reopen and produce a human infant genetically identical to the sample donor. The products of 1106, hereby referred to as SCP-1106-1, in the majority of all cases will develop normally and be indistinguishable from a naturally born human. Nonetheless, in a small portion of cases, about blank percent, instances of one will be born with marked defects. Recorded defects include being born with abnormal number of limbs, being born without skin, being born with the blank system positioned outside of the body, and potentially dangerous deviations in data expunged, coupled with a significant increase in aggression. Most notably, one instance of one was discovered to be emitting a remarkably high level of gamma radiation, forcing the immediate vicinity to be evacuated. And the addendum is a transcript of a label affixed to the exterior of it. Thanks for your purchase of your genuine Grow Your Own Child kit, brought to you by your friends here at the factory. Procreation has never been so easy and so fun. Just place your DNA sample inside and watch the Grow Your Own Child kit work its magic. Your child will be ready in less than three months, guaranteed. Results may vary. I wonder if this was a thing that they made while they had been holding Dr. Wondertainment hostage. Because it's not like the factory that put something on it like as cheerful as that. A signal. Let's see, it's SP 1107, it's safe. Although 1107 cannot be directly contained, it is important that knowledge of it not be released to the public. As 1107 is difficult to receive, cover-up is easily accomplished by the insertion of agents into the United States National Aeronautic, Aeronautics and Space Administration, so NASA. These agents have been attached to a research group studying the telemetry from the following long-distance space probes. I thought I was on the wrong line and I was about to say telemetry administration. Okay, Pioneer 10, surveillance discontinued 2003, Pioneer 11, discontinued 95. Voyager 1, Voyager 2, New Horizons, surveillance initiated on blank blank 2010. More surveillance is only required should further long distance space probes be launched. Addendum 11079. Following the translation work by Dr. Hulse, suggestions for reacting to 1107 are outlined by procedures in Addendum 8. Which I would assume is in here? Yeah, oh yeah, it's in there. Description. SCP-1107 was discovered in 1977 in telemetry received from the Pioneer 10 Long Distance Space Probe. It has been subsequently rediscovered by any space probe that ventures further than 12 astronomical units, approximately 1.8 billion kilometers, from the Sun. 1107 consists of a radio signal in the extreme low frequency range, normally observed at less than blank hertz. The low frequency and intensity of the signal means that it is extremely susceptible to interference from natural and man-made sources of particle-based and electromagnetic radiation. As a result, it can only be reliably distinguished from background radiation when the receiver is at extreme distance from any source of interference. Most crucially, this includes the electromagnetic radiations emitted by the sun, limiting reception to the outer solar system. 
The signal exists as a series of low frequency amplitude modulated carrier waves. The modulation of the signal varies discreetly from either a high or a low amplitude, displaying characteristics of a digitally encoded message. The bandwidth of these signals is extremely low, with estimations of the bit rate being around 90 B a year. Uh, I guess 90 bits? Ooh. Despite this low transmission low data transmission rate, 1107 clearly represents a transmission of intelligible data within our solar system. Currently, the information content of these signals is unknown. Triangulation of the signals by the available probes has determined that they are emitted by objects found in the uh, Kuiper Belt and Oort Cloud in the outskirts of the solar system. Lower bound estimates on the number of objects emitting these signals suggest that there are over blank million separate transmitters. Telescopic observation of the some of the nearer transmitters reveals them to be asteroid-like bodies. Spectral graph analysis of these bodies reveals them to contain unusually high purity silicone and silicate-based crystals with phosphorus and boron-based dopants. The uh, thermal telemetry reveals a discrepancy in the amount of solar energy absorbed on the hot sun-facing side of these objects and the infrared energy emitted by the cold outwards-facing side. Foundation researchers have hypothesized that this discrepancy would be sufficient to allow extracting of energy for useful tasks. However, the energy extracted will be almost negligible, suggesting that such tasks would either need to be very small or be carried out over a long time. Given that no mechanical action has been observed by 1107 emitters, the likely purpose of this task would be some form of information processing activity. And now there's addendum 8 limited to O5 clearance level only. Okie dokie, as of blankety blank 2000 something, Dr. Hulse has made significant breakthroughs in the translation of 1107. This was largely accomplished by associating certain common patterns within 1107 with astronomical positions and planetary orbital information. Dr. Hulse reports that the language of 1107 bears similarities with computer-based languages, however with greater provision for parsing, parsing semantic content such as used by sentient individuals. The following is an attempted translation of the most broadcast signal found within 1107. The low bit rate of 1107 means that this signal has been recorded over a 10 year span with further recording ongoing. The unclear possible amalgamation of hot life and intelligence has ascended once more. It is time for me slash us to act, possibly an, interrog an interrogative. You, I, must either choose, debate, or possibly vote now. Given the implications of this, the WC S committee has been tasked with suggesting an appropriate contingency response. Currently, the only procedures forwarded have been Protocol 6 Moses or Protocol 11 Porcupine. Neither of these are considered satisfactory at this time. Okay, I don't really know what either of those are and it didn't offer to explain them. What's up with the Swamp God? Well, it's Euclid and it says taken shortly before the dissipation of the Swamp God. Uh, special containment procedures. The first recorded appearance of this phenomenon is dated 19-something, filed in Foundation records as an extra-normal event. However, at least 10 repeat occurrences have since been verified, precipitating numbered status and close observation. Data recorded by surveilled meteorological centers will be transmitted to Research Sector 9 and should be consistently monitored for similarities to past data. Early signs of a recurrence of 1108 must be promptly identified, let's say. Containment proposal should be submitted to Dr. Dara for review. I don't know if you guys noticed, but every mention of Dr. the other doctor in the previous entry did not have a period after doctor, and it was bugging me. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I didn't like it. Description. SCP-1108 is a meteorological phenomenon which has only been observed along the southeast coast of the United States, recurring most frequently along the east coast of Florida. Most observers at ground level experience 1108 as a heavy fog with no evident anomalous properties. The, the two things that come to mind of that, the first thing that came to mind was dang it Florida men, and the second thing that came to mind was Persona 4. I don't know really how to explain it any further than that without wasting time. However, from an elevation above or approaching 450 meters, the formation reveals a distinct shape. Based on aerial photographs and the surrounding ecosystem, the shape is best described as resembling alligator Mississippiensis? Mis Mississippiensis, the American alligator. Why is Mississippi a part of the designation for alligator? Uh, seriously, why does the scientific... Uh, 
American alligator. Why did why did Mississippi need to be a part of that? Sometimes referred to colloquially as a gator or common alligator, is a large crocodilian reptile endemic to the southeastern United States. That description just raises even more questions, but we're not reading about alligators, we're reading about SCPs. In ideal conditions, the anomaly appears in enough detail for eyelids, teeth, and individual scutes to be clearly identified. Aerial or even peripheral observation indicates that the vaporous mass even moves its limbs, albeit slowly, mimicking the reptile's distinctive gait. 1108 most frequently appears a few hours before dawn, often emerging from an existing cloud bank at a dew point and temperature consistent with fog formation. This gator formation will maintain its distinct size and shape for upwards of 6 hours. During this 6 hour period, 1108 traverses an area of approximately 50 kilometers length, always towards the bordering Atlantic. The form appears to gradually dissipate into the atmosphere. The effects on the local ecosystem do not become apparent until after the formation's departure. These apparent influences have so far included an irregular rise in fresh water levels and an abnormal displacement of local wildlife. Specifically, in areas directly overshadowed by 1108's passage, adult alligators have been found congregating in the dozens. The infestations occur far from areas heavily populated by the native reptile, which appear in greatest numbers on private property and suburban developments favoring swimming pools. The lack of data from prior occurrences makes it difficult to predict whether the size, range, and extent of the phenomena's influence have remained stable or increased over time. It used to say, recorded appearances so far follow a regular interval occurring up to three times every two years, always preceding the wet season of June to September. See addenda. But first, excerpt from Field Report. Notable events which took place within 24 hours of SCP-1108's appearance over the 2185.2 square meters of residential space in something something county. 37 reports of juvenile and adult American alligators on private property. Woman reports adult male alligators inside her kitchen. Local media reported specimens length as 4.3 meters. Six reports of alligators attempting to enter homes. While behavior not unprecedented, number of instances highly abnormal. Three non-fatal attacks of alligators on humans, one resulting in significant injury one fatal attack of not juvenile male alligator against adolescent, and 18 reports of missing pets. The Florida Water Management District recorded an average of 16.5 centimeter rise in drainage canal levels, despite the lack of precipitation. As the majority of the southern portion of the state is kept above waterline by an extensive network of such drainage canals, any significant rise in freshwater levels could cause significant damage to populated areas. Local wildlife control had sufficient manpower to prevent undue fatalities, however it is unlikely that state budget or resources could adequately contain repeat occurrences. It is unknown at this time whether the intrusion of the American alligator was a displacement of existing creatures or indicative of a significant population increase. Necessary information control protocols were enacted without incident. Addendum 71 something. As of June the 21st something, uh, some year, 1108 has made two consecutive appearances. Only the second was accompanied by an influx of American alligators. However, the rise in water levels mandated flood evacuation in two counties. The extent of possible infestation of American alligators in flooded areas cannot be determined at this time. Next addendum. During the most recent occurrence, field researchers reported a previously unrecorded phenomenon described as a series of low, drawn-out rumbles which were sustained over several hours. Radiometric measurements taken during the course of these observations do not indicate temperature changes conductive to creating lightning. However, the subsequent recordings do bear a striking resemblance to the male, the male alligator's bellow. And there's a sound clip of it. I was kind of expecting it to be louder than that, since the implication is that the alligator is gigantic. Also, I guess that fog is supposed to be the giant alligator, because it is kind of shaped like one. Okay. Ah, uh, the painkiller. Is this that medicine that heals anything, or is that something else? I'm, I'm thinking in terms of the SCP Containment Breach game, where there's the medicine that you can take to heal anything, but I'm pretty sure that was an entirely separate SCP 
where there were just a bunch of pills that did different things and they didn't refill when you take them. SCP-1109 is to be stored in a safe class storage space at site blank. As per standard procedure and permission as per standard procedure, and permission must be obtained from the current level two supervising researcher, currently Dr. Somebody, before it may be removed from storage for testing purposes. The edges of any sharpened con instruments contained within 1109 are to be covered during storage so that handling the instruments cannot result in accidental injury. At the conclusion of testing, all intact instruments must be placed back inside 1109. Damaged instruments or instruments no longer fit for a purpose are to be disposed of but must not be used. During disposal or transport of instruments, the instruments must be kept covered and placed inside a, dur a durable container resistant to cutting in order to prevent accidental exposure from to the effects of 1109. Personnel affected by 1109 must attend regular basic medical examinations to detect any injuries incurred as a result of 1109's effects. Additionally, those entering the three-month stage of exposure are required to attend regular psychological review sessions. They must be accompanied whenever possible by another staff member who has basic first aid training to avoid injury or damage caused by their actions. Personnel affected by 1109 are barred from participating in any tests or role involving handling of fragile materials which require fine motor skills or which involve combat. Okay. SCP-1109 is a black leather doctor's bag approximately 44 by 21 by 22 centimeters with a metal fastener over the opening and a leather carrying handle. The words, Assesso Medical, we take your, we'll take your pain away, are printed on the other side of the bag. Assesso Medical closed in 19-something and no member of the company has yet been found who knows anything of the object or its properties. The anomalous effects of 1109 become apparent when any form of instrument or tool with a sharpened blade or, or point is placed in the bag and the bag is closed. Testing shows the instrument must be left in the bag for approximately 30 seconds before effects become noticeable. Any medical instrument left in the bag is rendered sterile and clean upon its subsequent removal from the bag. However, when a sharpened instrument is placed in the bag, it takes on a second property. Any incisions, injections, or other procedures performed using these items on a human being are seemingly painless. Such as are aware that they are being operated upon and do not report a lessening of tactile sensation or numbing during the procedures, and may describe the experience as unpleasant, but do not reg register any form of pain. Approximately two weeks from initial exposure, subjects cease being able to register pain in any context. This suppresses pain-based reflexes and can lead to accidental injuries and sometimes serious errors in judgment due to the subject being unable to notice that they have been injured. Approximately a month from exposure, subjects lose the ability to perceive any form of physical pleasure. Emotional pleasure is unaffected and subjects can find most normal activities enjoyable, but lose the ability to derive pleasure or enjoyment from any purely physical stimulus. This effect extends to the sense of taste and at least partially to the sense of smell, as evidenced by the inability of those affected to differentiate between taste and textures in food. Approximately three months from exposure, subjects begin to suffer from a steady deadening of all tactile sensation. This begins with a gradual numbing of the extremities, but swiftly progresses over the course of several days to the point of being completely unable to feel any form of tactile sensation. Some subjects undergoing this process have been observed to develop masochistic tendencies and may resort to self-harm in an attempt to continue to register physical sensation. However, as the condition progresses, even the most violent or severe of physical sensations become completely numb. At this stage, many subjects become severely depressed and begin to feel isolated or alienated from others. This is not considered to be an anomalous effect, and it is simply the psychological response to the loss of one of the senses. Only the sense of taste and touch are affected, and no lessening of the body's ability to function is observed. The subject loses much of their fine motor function as a result of this, as well as a lack of a reflex response to stimuli with a purely tactile or pain-based response. Subjects at this stage may also injure others accidentally due to an inability to register contact with them. Many overcompensate when applying force to an object which can result in damage or injury. Tools which have been placed in 1109 and have developed these anomalous properties will retain them indefinitely, even when separated from the bag. They lose these abilities when the sharpened edge or point of the instrument is dulled or destroyed in some way. No incidental sharp points or edges on an instrument, such as jagged points caused by damage, will exhibit any anomalous effects. Only the primary cutting edge or sharpened point of an object or an item is affected. The effect only extends to items intended to possess a sharpened point or cutting edge capable of puncturing skin. 
For example, a sharpened pencil placed in 1109 will not manifest anomalous properties even if its point punctures human skin, while a bread knife placed in 1109 will develop anomalous properties. Addendum Injuries and Incidents Involving It uh, A1-11091 At 11.12pm on blankety blank blank, Agent Blank died in his sleep. Autopsy confirmed the cause of death to be an internal hemorrhage of initially unknown source. Careful review and investigation of the circumstances of his death have led to the conclusion that Agent Blank received a small cut while transferring an item that had been removed from 1109 for disposal 13 days prior to his death. Agent Blank did not register this due to the painless nature of the injury. The day prior to his death, he was involved in an incident in which a group of D-Class became violent and attempted to resist Foundation authority. The agent was injured during a physical struggle with one of the D-Class in which he sustained significant internal injuries which he failed to recognize due to the influence of 1109. It is believed that Agent Blank would have survived his injuries had he sought appropriate medical attention, but mistakenly believed he had escaped the altercation unharmed and died as a result of his injuries during the night, some 10 hours after his initial injury. Testing of 1109 has been postponed in order to facilitate a restructuring of containment procedures to minimize further exposure of Foundation personnel. And then there's the second addendum. Agent Blank died at some point between 8 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. while in his home on Blankety Blank Blank. Cause of death was gunshot wound to the right temple believed to be self-inflicted. An audio recorder found on the body contained a pre-recorded message to his loved ones and colleagues at the Foundation, blaming the obvious influence for his mental state, ending with the statement, Well, what's the point in living if you feel like a ghost already? Containment procedures have been modified, and personnel exposed to 1109 are now required to submit mandatory psychological evaluations. Addendum 3. Well, 1-3. Investigation by Foundation personnel led to the discovery of a civilian apparently suffering the symptoms of 1109 exposure. Further investigation led to the discovery of an 1109 affected scalpel, which has somehow been transferred into a surgical theater in Blankety Blank Blank Hospital. It is unknown whether the scalpel originated from 1109 prior to its containment, if another item similar to 1109 exists, or if an instrument from 1109 was somehow removed from containment. An investigation into the matter is currently underway, but agents are advised to pay close attention to any reports of painless surgery while conscious, or of people with no ability to register pain. And then that closes that addendum. Addendum 2. Dr. Blank has received requests to use 1109 on D-Class personnel involved in the handling of certain objects which cause intense physical pain or pleasure. This request is currently pending uh, approval. And videos of a robbery. Which is also Euclid. Special containment procedures. MTF Gamma 5 Red Herrings is to monitor all police scanner traffic within a 72 kilometer radius of the most recent manifestation of a 10, 1110 in order to detect and scramble any potential reports of 1110 activity to law enforcement. Once a report is detected and stopped, Gamma 5 units are to report to the location of origin disguised as law, local law enforcement as per Hush Protocol 7 and confiscate all footage of 1110. All cash losses incurred are to be replaced through Foundation funds. Special accounts dedicated to loss replacement drawn on private banks have been created and provided to MTF squad leaders accordingly. A special task force of MTF Gamma 5, Gamma 5 STF 7 Reservoir Repairmen, has been created and tasked with impersonating a private security firm, Secure Corp Professionals, SCP. They really need to learn how to be more discreet than that. And gaining control of bank security in the area immediately surrounding recent manifestations of 1110 in order to destroy footage of 1110 as the event occurs, and to attempt to interfere if possible. Description. SCP-1011, damn it, 1110, is a series of phenomena that thus far seems to appear only on video cameras manufactured later than 19-something and centers around financial institutions, such as banks or other repositories of currency in the blank United States. To date, Blank instances of 1110 manifestation have been confirmed, and between blank and blank unconfirmed cases are suspected to involve it, with at least one case coinciding with a typical bank robbery that occurred simultaneously in the same institution, making loss verification impossible. Unexplained losses by financial institutions lacking video monitoring systems are included in this approximation. During a typical manifestation, two humanoid entities with their faces obscured by dark material designated 1 and 2 can be seen on camera footage entering the financial institution brandishing guns in a threatening manner, coupled with aggressive body language. 1 and 2 typically wear dark clothing and are distinguished by a gray hood on 1 and what seems to be a skull-like mask obscuring on 2. 
mask obscuring. The pair will generally approach a teller and move in a fashion indicative of a robbery demands. At this point, the teller individual will seem to comply with these demands by raising their hands above their heads and carefully handing over money, which one will place in a briefcase while two maintains its threatening pose over the teller. Once a sum of cash between blank and blank has been handed over, one will steal the briefcase and nod, the two and the entities will exit the building. Note that the entities and phenomena occur only on video. During the time frame that video records, uh, the, that video records 1110 activity, business will commence as usual in the bank. No teller or customer present during an event, including foundation personnel on the scene, has ever seen, heard, or felt one or two, even in cases where they have been shown in the video to physically assault or data expunged. Uh, a. Following a manifestation of 1110, a sum of cash approximately equal to the amount shown being stolen in video footage will be missing from the place of manifestation. There have been confirmed cases of the entity stealing other items during a manifestation, including an incident in which 1110-2 apparently demanded that a bank patron hand over his wristwatch. Following the manifestation, the patron com commented to Foundation interviews that his watch was present, but has stopped at the incident of removal shown in the video. Addendum A. On blank blank 19 something, a teller was shown in 1110 footage to resist and was subsequently shot by two. Post incident reviews with other bank employees revealed data expunged. Addendum B. Yes, I am aware that the containment protocols for 1110 currently allow the possibility that legitimate crimes, legitimate crimes, will go and have gone unreported due to accidental interference by MTF Gamma 5. I assure you all that, I assure you you all that this is a risk we must accept in order to maintain containment and prevent public knowledge of 1110. C. On blank blank blank, security cameras for a small pay to park business adjacent to the financial institution targeted by 1110 captured footage of one and two fleeing the building on foot and entering a delivery vehicle parked in the pay to park lot. The vehicle was not recorded in the payment logs of the pay to park enterprise, nor was it observed by the employee operating the toll gate, and was driven by what appeared in the footage to be a Caucasian person of indeterminate build. The logo on the vehicle was noted by the agent who recovered the footage to bear striking similarity to redacted, and the possibility of a connection is currently under investigation. A proposal to add the modification of security video systems to include exterior and parking area cameras in all financial institutions under observation by MTF G5 STF7 the containment protocols for 1110 is under review pending authorization from Commander Blank. Okie dokie. So that about does it for this episode. In the next one, we'll be checking out The White Dog, Shadow Play, Lachesis Spinner, What a Dummy, and Distant Early Warning. So if you like this video, a like and subscribe will be groovy. If you didn't, you don't need to do either one of those things. If you'd like to click the bell, you can do that as well so that you'll be notified when I upload more videos. And I will see you all in the next one. Later.